Okay. Um, so the topic of my presentation is Unleashing Diverse Voices of Colonialism, Topic Modeling Translated and Original Adventure Fiction in Semi-Colonial China. The connection between adventure novels and Western colonialism has been well studied by scholars of post-colonial studies. Um, however, little attention has been paid to um, the, the fact that since the 19th century, a large number of Western adventure novels have been translated into East Asia, like in Japan and China. Since the Meiji era, uh, Japanese adventure fiction has developed into a mature fictional genre under Western influences. And later, many works of Japanese adventure fiction also came into China through translation. According to my um, bibliographic research from 19, um, 1898, um, when Robinson Crusoe got translated into Chinese to the important year of 1919, there were 199 transla Chinese translations of Western and Japanese adventure fiction and 70 local creations published. And I study um, these translations and creations as my corpus of modern Chinese adventure fiction and take a corpus-based approach to analyze them. And my analysis is focused on how Western colonialist ideas were appropriated in Chinese translations and creations. Given uh, modern China's complex colonial experiences, at the turn of the 20th century, the Qing Empire as a colonial empire was collapsing and China was sliding towards becoming a colony of Western powers and Japan. With a large number of Chinese emigrants to Southeast Asia, Southeast Asia and other areas, emigration became an important subtype of um, in, in English is colonization as showing how modern Chinese writers use the word. Um, so I compare um, the expression of colonial ideas in the three groups of text, uh, Chinese adventure fiction, translated adventure fiction, and their originals. And my corpus um, is, uh, is made up of 139 translations, 39 translations, 55 creations, and 47 originals in English. Um, I, well, I also add some of the um, documents, um, turn them into data. And um, due to the large number of texts involved, I based my, stu my study first on the distant reading of these data sets and then move further to the close reading. And um, since my analysis is mostly on the thematic level, I adopt a machine learning technique called topic modeling to extract the latent topics of this text. Um, topic modeling is a statistic uh, te technique used for identifying clusters of semantically related words in a body of text. In less technical words, a topic can be understood as a group of words that frequently occur together um, common topic models include like LSA, PLSA, and LDA, uh, the latent um, Dirichlet allocation, and I use LDA in this study. And according to Blay, LDA is a generative probabilistic model of a corpus. Um, it can generate the prob uh, probabilities of words contributing to a topic and uh, the distribution of topics across different documents. So I, um, in this study, I ran the Python calls and visualized them as shown in this um, visual. And later I also put them into um, tables so that they can be more intelligible and interpretable. Okay, so this is a summary of uh, the main topics of these three data sets. And I will analyze them. Um, so uh, LDA topic modeling reveals that um, these different thematic focuses across the, um, my three data sets, and they show the different perceptions of adventure in Chinese and Western adventure fiction. While uh, while adventure in my uh, my corpus of Western adventure fiction mainly involves the outdoor life away from home, original Chinese adventure fiction gives more attention to one's domestic life. Um, and the Chinese translation as an intermediate form of literature socialize the topics of their originals. 
by transferring the focus from like nature, human in a general sense to specific national, ethnic and social subjects. Um, yeah, um, this is a text. Okay, um, then I will go through um, the results of each data set. Um, so you can see um, the thematic uh, differences between Western and Chinese adventure fiction, they are actually close, closely tied to Chinese Western colonial history since the 16th century and modern Chinese experiences with colonialism in the early 20th century. And as shown in this table too, um, human life, sea travel, outdoor life, and military activities make up the four um, most uh, dominant topics of my corpus of uh, Western adventure fiction. Around 36 of the terms in the corpus contribute to the topic of human life and make it the top topic. And 15 most relevant terms for this topic can be put into three categories, like human survival and the body. And together, reveal, they reveal that human survival and the body are the two important parts of one's adventure life. As pointed by um, Michael Addis, um, in the case of European empires, substantial migration was encouraged to make possible the establishment of settlement colonies in areas with relatively sparse populations, congenial temperate climates, and disease environments. So European adventurers were the earliest uh, colonizers of many inhabitable areas in the continents of America, Australia, and of Africa and faced with these challenging living conditions, um, it's not hard to understand that uh, survival was their foremost concern. And so the larger number of uh, words for body parts attached to the argument that body is an important element in adventure fiction by Martin Green. In my uh, corpus, there are many detailed descriptions of the following three types of bodies. Um, the adventurous body, the animal body, and the bodies of indigenous people. On the one hand, for the adventure life in isolation and the wilderness directs one's attention to the physical needs and bodily experiences, and hunger illness and other uh, life threats are common experiences. They expose the vulner uh, vulnerability of the human body. On the other hand, uh, the adventurous body is strong enough to withstand these challenges is worshipped and shaped as the heroic and the masculine model. So um, adventure fiction provides an imagined masculine ideal that, that values qualities like body strength, courage, adventure spirits, uh, etc. And the formation of this masculinity code has a had a, a reciprocal relationship with the rise of British imperialism in the Victorian period, and it embodied the imperialist ideology that the empire needed stronger bodies to, and the heroic characters from its men and, and boys. And how adventure fiction made the male body visible can be seen in some examples like Henry Ryder Haggard's She, um, in which the young ad adventurer Leo Vinci's male body um, formulates aesthetics of like a tall, strong, graceful male body with a beautiful face. And in many other cases, the other forms of uh, bodies, including the animal body and the native's body are also employ employed to validate the superiority of the adventurous male body. Not only the animal body and the native's body are um, constructed as the, the others, but they are putting in an inferior position in the hierarchical uh, species or racial order. And these discourses are used to justify and naturalize the colonial order dominated by uh, Western colonizers. And um, I, I don't think we have enough time for example, so I will just skip this close reading. Um, so I, I actually here, I use an example from Jack Manley to talk about this. Um, the presentation, the, the presence of such a hierarchical order, like the um, the, the animal body, the native body, and the Western adventurous body in the novel. Okay, and the next uh, um, data set, while outdoor life is a major topic of Western adventure fiction, the main topics of original Chinese adventure fiction, such as the gentry life, domestic life, palace life, clearly show an indoor 
tendency. The 15 most relevant terms for topics of outdoor mainly, um, outdoor life mainly include words like for natural things and human engagement in nature with outdoor equipment. Um, but as shown in this table three, the most frequent words for the topics of uh, gentry life, domestic life, and palace life can be put into the following categories, including like social titles and identities, um, home related words and items with strong social features. So the, the outdoor indoor um, difference here between our Western Chinese adventure fiction reveals the different life statuses of Western Chinese adventurers on their journeys. Many works uh, in my corpus of Western adventure fiction tell stories about how Western adventurers build up their lives in the wilderness. In such cases, um, Nature is where they live, and the, such a strong presence of the engagement in nature mirrors how Western colonizers in the 19th and 19th centuries established their settlement colonies in underpopulated, underdeveloped areas. While European countries were the initiators and policymakers of the colonial system they had started to build since the 16th century, and China joined the game in the 19th century, it was a late comer faced with an established colonial order. In this context, what Chinese adventurers could do was no longer to build up settlements in nature, but to negotiate with the existing colonial order in realms of domestic and social lives. So it explains why domestic life and social relations are the thematic focuses. Um, okay, and uh, in my corpus of original Chinese adventure fiction, only five out of the 55 works can be called a novel, while the rest are all short, dense texts. And the dominance of these topics like gentry life, domestic life, palace life is well exemplified in the, these five um, novels. And I will um, use one for my analysis. So this uh, Moon Colony, um, it is an incomplete work, incomplete work serialized in a magazine. And its protagonists, including a Japanese man, Tamataro, uh, his Chinese wife, Pu Yuguan, Chinese friend of this couple, Long Monghua, they travel around the world in a balloon to find Long's wife and son. Long and his family got separated due to a shipwreck when they flee to Malaysia as Chinese political refugees. And the whole story is framed into their separation and reunion. And the adventurers travel from Malaysia to uh, Britain, America, India, and many sea islands. And in the end, they find Long's wife on, island, on an island, and Long's son comes back to the moon to reunite with them. Long family travel to uh, the moon, but the novel stops before telling their life on the moon. Family is an important theme um, in this novel. Other than the Long family, Tamatalo also takes his family on a journey and makes the balloon a well-equipped home for them. So with a kitchen, some bedrooms, uh, a gymnastic room, pharmacy, and so on. On a the balloon, they live a gentry style life with a large team of servants and their domestic life on the balloon takes as much space as their adventures off the balloon and is depicted in detail. Um, and also uh, this novel uh, presents modern Chinese complic complicated colonial situation through um, their travel experiences. The, there are depictions of the life of Chinese immigrants in Southeast uh, Asia. They reveal the um, Chinese immigrants' settlement, colonialism. Um, they uh, mix up an important part of uh, modern Chinese colonial experiences, and this system clashes with um, Western and Japanese colonialism, in which China is on the colonizer side. Um, thus, we can see a hierarchical chain is formed, and the author draws from social Darwinism to pre pre to present such a chain in the novel. But he also expresses his doubt by imagining a stronger power that could easily destroy all the extant colonial orders on Earth, the colonizer from the moon. Um, so Long's family brings back with uh, sorry, Long's son brings back with him some several more tech technologically advanced balloons from the moon that showcase the superiority of the moon civilization. And it arouses the following reflections on uh, Chinese and, uh, sorry, on Japanese and Western colonialism by the Japanese adventurer Tamatalo, so as cited here. Um, by pushing the uh, colonial logic to its extreme, 
Um, the author argues that the extension of the colonial chain will move the, the advantage to the disadvantaged position and thus give opportunities for the even weaker parties. In the novel, Long Wenghua's family follows the visitors back to the moon to learn more about the moon civilization. So it implies that the peripheral countries in the extant a colonial order like China can learn from the most advanced ones to gain opportunity to change its situation. And the last uh, data set in, in the Chinese translations of Western Japanese adventure fiction shown in the table four, uh, the topic of the imperial power rises to be the top topic and topics like noble and love, um, uh, aristocracy, indigenous people also emerge to replace the generic topic human life and the topic country and army uh, compared to military activities in the original emphasized the country as the subject of colonial expansion and consequent military conflicts. Of all the Chinese translations socialize the thematic focuses and they play an intermediate role in the shift of the thematic focuses from the outdoor colonial expeditions to the domestic and social negotiations with colonial uh, relations in Chinese adventure fiction following the direction of like socialization and the politicization. And uh, this showcases the process of appropriating Western colonialism in the service of national salvation in modern China. And uh, in the topic of imperial power, we see words associated with the imperial ruler, like queen or emperor and uh, the subordinates and some items related with power. And the word frequency survey of my uh, corpora shows that the Chinese translators tend to increase the use of words like queen or emperor in their translations as shown in this table of five, um, the word frequency of um, Nu Wang, Nu Zhu, that is the queen um, in the Ch Chinese translations um, are increased, most of them increase in uh, compared with the originals. And I also use two examples. Um, to Chinese translations of the novel Xi um, to, to analyze the practice of emphasizing the titles and identities of monarchs in, in the translation. Um, so then in, in this example one, we can see all she and her are replaced with the title the queen and in this scene, well, uh, the queen Aisha's physical beauty and attractiveness are given detailed descriptions um, the repeated use of the queen has the effect of reminding readers that the scene is more than a depiction of the erotic attraction between the two sexes. It implies that the queen's beauty is also an, an embodiment of her political and magic power as an authority. The unveiling of her body to the man, Holly, is also a display of her supreme power to the subordinate. Um, and uh, in another uh, translation, and the translator Zeng Guangquan made the same choice to emphasize Aisha's identity as a monarch in his translation. And um, the first person pronoun uh, in Chinese, Zheng, is exclusively used by a monarch. So here he repeatedly uses Zheng to replace the neutral pronoun in English, like my, my, I, me in, in the translation, and such an emphasis. Such an emphasis on the imperial power um, in the translation, it can be interpreted as a way to politicize literary works. Many uh, literary translations, especially fiction translation in Lei Qing, function as the enlightenment tool to promote Western knowledge and new political ideas with the advocacy of reformist translators. And Zeng Guangquan was one of the reformists and his uh, translation was published in Shi Wu Bao, the official institutional newspaper for reformist intellectuals. And the political agenda for the reformists who supported the 100 days reform was to establish constitutional monarchy in China with reforms. And the monarchy system would be retained and the emperor was expected to lead the political and social reforms and to save China from its grave national crisis. So in in Zeng's translation, Aisha as the queen is shaped as a ruler that has political ambitions and techniques rather than an object of erotic um, desire. And then the, the other translator, Lin Shu, was also a staunch monarchist, loyal to the Qing court, although he also supported political and social reforms. And uh, he didn't make a direct comment on why he um, uh, 
chose to use the queen, but we can uh, infer from his comment on another queen protagonist in Hager's adventure novels, the Egyptian um, queen uh, Cleopatra. Um, he expresses his sympathy with the queen uh, or the, the ruler of a vanquished nation like the Egyptian queen. It reflects his attitude toward the emperors in real life because the Qing emperor was also faced with a grave national crisis at the time. And it also lies with his emphasis on the imperial identity of the, um, the emperor and queen characters such as Aisha in his translations. And there is a lot more to explore with the translations. And so this is uh, what I have for now. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.